Already the cars have been on the road for two and a half hours, taking in three stages between Belfast and here where they're due any minute. Remember how it finished up last night? Russell Brooks was in front and he was just ahead of Jimmy McRae and behind them Bernard Béguin, the Frenchman who was a rather surprising third place. Fourth then came Bertie Fisher, behind him was Billy Coleman and three other Irishmen in the top ten, Ernest Kidney, Austin McHale and Ken McKinstry. So a lot to look forward to today and a great deal of impressive driving already underway. We'll get the very latest position now from Gary Gillespie. Thanks George, the man who's just come into the service area here at Dundalk is Jimmy McRae, still lying second. In spite of some excitement this morning, Jimmy, what exactly happened? Yeah, we hit, uh, well, just a normal bump in the road and the, the four spotlights come off the front of the car and actually come back and smash the windscreen. So, it, uh, so you had all the bit. windscreen glass coming in around uh -huh. you? Huh? Well, it's actually a safety glass, so it didn't come in, but it was all marled and it was very difficult to see. And uh, we obviously slowed us in that stage. And in the next stage, the lights weren't set properly, so we were a bit slower there as well. You got all the problems resolved now? Yes, that's it now, yes. Uh -huh. well, you, it doesn't happen again. You're going to make a charge for the first position now? Aye, we must do that now. How's it been going over the last couple of stages? Oh, yeah, the last, well, the last uh, one was, was all right. We had no problems there. And we equalled uh, Russell's time, but we took quite a lot of time out of Russell in the first stage this morning, so we thought that was it. You know, we're, we're going to have a go, then this happened. But that's what it's all about. That's what rallying's all about. The Frenchman Bernard Begwin was discovering what rallying was all about as the third place Porsche dropped down the top ten due to a series of problems. We had a lot of trouble in the last two stages. What has been happening to you? Well, we had a, a problem with a fan belt which, which was broken, you know, and we had to change and uh, be after. And, uh, so we have lost uh, a lot of minutes in the, in the control area. I, I don't know. If it's, uh, have you any idea how much time you've lost? About eight minutes, I think. I said uh, 80 seconds, and then we had a puncture on the last stage, and we had to change the wheel, so we've lost about five minutes, I think. So you read the menu, fed up all the new yeah, yes. yep, all of that. Although rivalry is intense between Brooks and McRae, it's a temporary truce over breakfast. Ian Grinrod summarizes the situation. We're uh, 26 seconds behind Russell. 26 seconds. Yeah. And are you closing? We were. We, we, we closed on the first one. We lost a bit of ground on the second one when the spotlights flew off and broke the windscreen. And then on the third one, Russell got into gear and took 10 seconds off us. And on the last one, we did the same time as each other. So you're going to put the pressure on now? Uh, I'm not prepared to say that with Russell sitting over there. <laughs> <laughs> I see you're tucking into your breakfast. I'm sure you've yeah, earned it. very good as well. It's a good restaurant, this. <laughs> What had it been like out there in the darkness? Night driving demands a lot of illumination from the spotlights and a lot of experience, as Billy Coleman shows. Slow left, 60. Press 30, mid right, and caution, long K left, tighten, stay in. K right and K right, 40. Right flat, 300. Easy left, 60, left flat over crest, 200. Turn tight, bad left. 20. Crest and easy left, 50. Easy left and crest flat, 300. Long crest, 40, K right, 40. Slow right, one half, top of hill. Quick left over crest, 40, crest flat, 80. Long K left, 40. Slight left, 400 kinks. Slow right, 50. K left, 50. Slow right, 40. Slow left. And finish. Of course, the rally doesn't simply involve the drivers. There are massive backup queues involved. Melvin Hodgson, who's with me now, is the manager of the Vauxhall Opel team. Any particular problems in taking the circuit around? Well, yes, we've just had a serious problem where the service vans have been held up on the border, which has obviously caused us a problem where the rally cars arrive and we've not got no vans available to service them. So are they going to have to go out of here without actually being seen to? Uh, no. Um, 
with a stroke of luck, we just managed to get the vans in. So we've managed to get new tyres on the vehicles and they're ready to go now. I suppose it's a particularly Irish problem, this one. Um, you could say it's all part of the rally. Special stage 15 and a bird's eye view of English driver Tony Pond on the two mile section along the shore at Malahide. The last section before a welcome break at Dublin Airport. Although the Computer Vision V8 Rover is a Group A car, Pond is really using its 300 horsepower to stay well up the leaderboard. Overnight leaders Russell Brooks and Mike Broad are still setting the pace from the front. But Jimmy McRae clings tenaciously to second place his dice with Brooks is developing into a real battle. <laughs> Ulsterman Bertie Fisher and Austin Fraser stay third, but can't seem to claw back any time from their Opal teammates. while Terry Cabey's Nissan 240RS is looking increasingly menacing in fourth place. <laughs> Louise Aiken Walker and Ellen Morgan have taken over as leading ladies since the first day demise of Michelle Mouton. They lie 23rd overall. Billy Coleman made a slow start to the day and had to retrace his wheel tracks after missing out a control point. But after sorting out some electrical problems, he moved up a place to fifth. Controlling the spectators has been a major problem in this year's circuit, as Russell Brooks found out at one of the early stages. That was in fact first stage after the restart. Uh, it didn't cost a lot of time, but it was a sort of a frightening moment. We had to lock everything solid and come down to a very low speed before they scrabbled out of the way, but they just fell off the banking in front of us, yeah. I wonder who was more frightened, you or the fellow who fell I, off the I think I was. <laughs> Bertie Fisher's beside you now. Bertie, we're talking about local knowledge and all that. Uh, you can't complain about lack of local knowledge. Has it gone as you expected it to go so far? Yeah, it's pretty much as I expected. Uh, we're having a very steady drive and uh, everything's going fine. It's typically Irish weather, isn't it? it? Come one minute, it's sunshine, the next it's rainy, but just about everything so far. Yeah, it has been a bit like that. Uh, in fact, we made a few wrong tyre choices yesterday and lost a little bit of time with that, but uh, there's still a long way to go and I'm sure we'll have a lot more of it. Well, now, you're in third position at the moment, and in second is the man beside you, Jimmy McRae, who's looking a trifle as I feel at the moment. Is it as bad as all that? <laughs> yeah, I look as bad as that, do I? <laughs> uh, not really. I think when you, you've got a, a long road section, then you've an hour sitting about, then you begin to feel a bit tired. But uh, once we leave here, and it's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, starting Sally Gap, then you're soon waking up. 
And so too Sally Gap in the heart of the Irish countryside. The pace is really hotting up now. Russell Brook still leads, but Jimmy McRae is pressing hard. Bertie Fisher is still there. And the Frenchman, Bernard Begwan, well, he's trying to come back after a disastrous start to the day. So it was still Opal 1, 2 and 3 as the rally took to the hills. But Russell Brooks was the man they all had to catch. Like Brooks, Jimmy McRae has a hat-trick of circuit wins behind him, and he was aiming for a fourth. Terry Cabey's Nissan had been tipped to do well in the circuit, and the Englishman was proving the pundits were right. Bernard Begois put his early tyre and fan belt problems behind him, dropped from third to tenth at one point, but was starting to climb back. The battle for Group A honours continued through the Wicklow Mountains, but Tony Pond's rover was over three minutes ahead of nearest challenger Per Eklund. The 1979 circuit winner Pentia Ricola was still going strong in his British telecom sponsored Astra. He calls it the fastest phone box in the world. The Circuit of Ireland rally attracts a reputed one million spectators during its five day run. They expect exciting, spectacular motoring action, and so far they haven't been disappointed. And the countryside is spectacular too. Ochavana is another classic Wicklow stage full of bumps and twists and a really testing time for both members of the crew. Jimmy McRae still chasing the rally leader Brooks through the townland of Ochavana itself. Bertie Fisher from Ballina Mallard and the third Opal Manta is holding third place. Billy Coleman is still to settle with the Rothmans Porsche. Now that electrical problem is getting worse and the next service at Winnipeg is over 40 miles away. Both Billy and his co-driver Ronan Morgan have by no means given up hope. They feel it will surely come very right for them, if not on this stage, then the next. Square left, 50, mid right, 400. K right, 400. Crest flat, one half, long fast right, 60. Crest and K left, 50. Slow right, 500 kinks. Pass left, 300. Terry Cavey has the Nissan 240RS well placed at four. Tony Pond's Rover Vitesse is now sixth overall and the clear leader of Group A. Austin McHale from Rathcoole at County Dublin was ninth overnight. He's now charging. The action continues to give pleasure and excitement to the crowds around Ochavana. service stop there were no real changes though the Rothmans Porsche team had to deal with that Coleman misfire.
The co-driver Ronan Morgan and Colvin himself explain the situation. The, um, the situation is that we're, we're lying about fifth. Uh, we had a few problems this morning and this afternoon. Uh, the engine's cutting out, it just completely dies sometimes. It happened us twice in the road section and uh, it affected us on Sally Gap and Agavana. So uh, we really don't know what the problem is. The lads are trying to sort it out now, but they don't have much time. They've only got 17 minutes here in this service area, so hopefully we'll get it sorted. Well, the engine just cut out completely on a couple of occasions. We've, we've no idea what it is, and uh, at one, one point that ship was gone, actually, but suddenly just started up again. So they're just changing all the, the electrical parts here now, and see, but hopefully we'll eliminate it. You've lost a lot of time. We've lost a lot of time this morning. Yeah. Coleman's team bosses, David Richards and David Lapworth, have ideas about how the Porsche might handle better. OK, Kevin. And will you have a look at the track and see if we can sort of check yeah. the ride heights on the track? Yeah. Maybe it's towing out a little bit or something. Because be, yeah. He's got no confidence over bumps, quite obviously. That's the problem. OK. So even if you make it we tow drop in, it down. We, if we drop get it down it, a little bit can, and then tow it in. If we can get it down for a few seconds now, roll it back and forward, yeah. check it out. On to Kilkenny and a stage near Callum. And Russell Brooks still in front, but still setting the pace. Jimmy McRae keeping the pressure on, playing a waiting game, I wonder. Their teammate Bertie Fisher has the age old problem. Another Ulsterman, Kenny McKinstry from Banbridge in the Escort, going well this afternoon and as spectacular as ever. John Price, while striking on the side of his Renault 5 Turbo, not in the top 10, he's still prepared to fling the car around. Then on to Schlieve the Mon, stage 19, a great stage, high in the mountains. Brooks, rally leader, still in front, closely followed by McRae. Bertie Fisher right on song. So he should be. His co-driver won the rally in 1974, Austin Fraser. Billy Coleman really hasn't been his day. The quiet man, Terry Cabey from Hertfordshire, still virtually trouble-free, just the one puncture. Tony Pond, the rover. Austin McHale has been battling against food poisoning. He seems to be winning and improving his performance too. And more high-class driving from McKinstry. There was a damp start to the final stage of the day. And with a lead of nearly half a minute, Russell Brooks might have been excused for taking it a little easier. But no one told Russell Brooks that. And then nothing Russell Brooks could do, Jimmy McRae was doing too. Behind the leading pair, Bertie Fisher was delayed by a puncture, but he's looking forward to the Sunday run with a special new back axle. But for Billy Coleman, a bad day was about to get worse. Long K right tightens, 14 K, square right. And bad left, 300. Keep going. Co-driver Ronan Morgan spots the problem. Is that it? You're joking me. Is it not a puncture, no? Repeat, slow right and square left. And square right, don't cut. Left into square left, 200. A quick check confirms it. Yes, okay. it's a puncture on the very last stage. Doubt it very much. This side, I'm okay. Yep. No, no way. Pardon? Perfect. Fast. To change? Yeah. Will we change? I 
Officer, carry on. No way, we've changed. No, don't give a shot. No way, we've changed. And to add to Coleman's problems, Tony Pond was rapidly catching him on the stage and was soon breathing down his neck. The Porsche was vibrating badly. as Pond roared past them, Coleman and Morgan realised they had to stop and change the wheel. Ah well, tomorrow's another day. OK. Uh, well, I think tomorrow we'll have to go a bit harder and see if we can make up some time. Uh, the roads should suit the Porsche a bit better, I think, tomorrow. And hopefully we get some of the sunshine. This is about the first we've seen for two days. It suits you better than it would suit the Mantis? Yes, it would indeed, yeah. Tony Pond looking somewhat concerned. What kind yeah. of a day have you had? Not too bad, it's, it's been no real problems. Just the weather keeps changing. Whenever we put slick tires on, it rains. When we take them off, it's sunny. This seems to be the song of the Circuit of Ireland 85. Everybody's yeah. saying it. Yeah, it makes drama, doesn't it? Mm, it's good to watch. You yeah. were telling us before we ever got underway that uh, you wondered about the Rover and the tight little roads. We saw you at Malahide this morning and you gave us a lovely little shimmy. Has yeah. it been hard? Not really, no. The, car, the car's very easy to drive. Power steering, power brakes. Um, it's not too bad, but you mustn't get caught out and end up coming too quickly into a, a, a tight space. That's, that's a big problem. Mm. And how are you placed now? I have no idea. I think we're doing reasonably well. And we're leading Group A, which is the main job. Mm. Well, we were following Kenny McKinstry's progress through the day. We heard things had gone badly and he dropped out of the top ten. But I'm pleased to say it's a happy Kenny McKinstry who's with us now. Where are you? I think we're actually ninth or possibly tenth. Uh, we've got ahead of Per Ackland. Over the last three stages, we started to take. We took a fair bit of time off, them actually, you know. So we decided whenever we got to Waterford, we'd give it a bit of stick. And we're waiting for tomorrow. We have Ernest Kidney here, who's made it back to Waterford too. What kind of a day did you have? It was a pretty reasonable afternoon. And then things went sorry, reasonable morning, and things went to pieces this afternoon. Now. Being pretty sort of wicked off the whole thing just at the minute. It's been so difficult all afternoon to know what tyres to put on, and some people seem to be able to get it right, and we always seem to have the knack of getting it all wrong. Oh and, no! Uh, it's just. It's caused us a lot of problems and it's, it's actually been quite dangerous driving on the wrong too hard a compound but all it means is we've got to work all that much harder tomorrow. So that's it for day two of the Rothman Circuit of Ireland Rally 1985. Still very much a battle between the Opal Mantas of Russell Brooks and Jimmy McRae. Now 28 seconds separate them at the top. Bertie Fisher and his Manta is still in there in third place. Billy Coleman sadly is back down in eighth. Tomorrow, we're off into the county of Waterford for 10 special stages there before resting up again in the city tomorrow night. Well, we'll leave you for now with a look at the man who was most improved on the day, up from ninth place to fifth to finish it off tonight. That's Austin McHale from Dublin. Bye-bye for now. There's still six mantas left. Uh, there's none of them apparently giving any trouble. So I reckon it'll be the mantas, one of the main opposition. Sally Gap is a very quick stage. Um, there's a lot of sheep around, but obviously the club will have the stage well cleared. It's a very open stage, you have no banks, no trees, and nothing to go on. So, pace notes are very important. Um, if you haven't got your notes done very well, you'll be slow on it. But uh, hopefully we've done a very good practice on that particular stage and the stage after it. And we hope to go fairly well on it. We're happy with the position we're lying at the moment and we're looking forward to heading down south to stages which we're more familiar with. That is uh, Sally Gap and Akavana, which we... They're stages which are very open mountain stages very bumpy, very rough, but the terrain is more suited to like an Austin style of drive and we hope to do fairly well down there tomorrow.